in a place where we can. Let's um, begin to thank God for bringing us together again today for another time in His presence. Let's begin to appreciate God for sparing our lives to witness another time in His presence. Lord in heaven, we thank you. Lord, we appreciate you for bringing us together. Let's begin to pray. Lord, we say thank you. We appreciate you for gathering us together again. Lord, we say thank you. Lord, we appreciate you. We bless your holy name. Accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask, O oh God, that you will come into our midst today. You will come at this preeminent in the name of Jesus. <coughs> In the name of Jesus, let us invite the Holy Spirit into our midst today. Let us invite the Holy Spirit to today's meeting that he will come and take preeminent in the name of Jesus. It should be a success in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, So, um, as we have been told earlier this week, that today's meeting will be a continuation of the theme, Grace for Access. And um, Madam Amy gave us an insight, you know, using Matthew 13, verse 10 to 11, you know, where, where Jesus um, spoke to the crowd using the parable of the sower. And later on, his disciples um, met with him and they asked Jesus why he spoke to the crowd in parable. And Jesus responded in verse 11, saying, because the secrets of the kingdom of heaven have been given to you to know, but it has not been given to them. So considering this um, this scripture that we've read, we will ask that the Holy Spirit will, will, will open our minds th this morning. He will open our ears. He will open our, our um, eyes to understand the word as the word comes forth. Let us begin to pray that the Holy Spirit will open our ears, it will open our hearts, it will open our ears as the word comes forth in the name of Jesus. We will receive it. We will receive it in the name of Jesus. Luke 24 verse 45 says, and he opened their, their mind to understand the scripture. As the word comes forth this afternoon, our hearts, Yes, 
And um, during the course of the week at EIC, um, Mr. Damala also gave us an exposition on how the devil has installed gates you know, to deny God's children access to things meant for us. Uh, we'll pray using Psalm 24, verse 7. It says, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted. Let the king of glory, lift up you ancient doors, and let the king of glory come in. We will command everything posing as gates, everything posing as barriers, everything denying us access to what we need to lay hold of in Christ Jesus. We command them this minute, this afternoon, to be to be lifted. Let it be lifted. Let it be lifted. Let us begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Let us begin to command everything, denying us access. Everything <inaudible> posing, <inaudible> every, everything <inaudible> And <laughs> They <laughs> 
Let us pray for the vessel God will be using to minister to us this afternoon. Let us ask that the Holy Spirit will fill her up that her ministration this afternoon will be a demonstration of God's power. It will be a demonstration of his spirit, as it has always been. Let us pray that the Lord will anoint her tongue and he will, he, will, he, will, he will minister unto her to be able to deliver what he wants us to lay hold of this afternoon. Let us begin to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we commit the vessel you'll be using to minister to us this afternoon, God, that her ministration of God will be the demonstration of our ability of your spirit in the name of Jesus we ask that you in the name of Jesus, we ask, oh God, that you will have us in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And even as the, as, as the word will come forth, we declare, declare that our hearts will be receptive, our minds are receptive in the name of Jesus. It will fall on the fertile part of our hearts in the name of Jesus. We oh Lord, we ask, oh God, that your verse, oh God, you will use our mind this afternoon as we as as always do. We ask that it will be a demonstration of your power. It will be a demonstration of your spirit. In the name of Jesus, the words that will be spoken to us this afternoon it will fall on the fertile part of our hearts. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, our hearts are receptive. In the name of Jesus, our eyes are open, our ears are open, our minds are receptive. In the name of Jesus, thank you. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. 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 God, God bless you, Madam Ayumi. Okay, so we are we are praying. And our next prayer point says we are praying for the glory of God to be revealed unto us. So one thing, what's the glo glory of God? And it says what the manifested presence of God, not just his presence, but you know, that presence comes with power. As Romans 8 18 says, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. 
And so when we look at the presence of God, the manifested presence of God, which is the glory of God, that comes with power. When we pray for God's glory to be revealed unto us, that power is able to re resurrect. Is that power of God that resurrected Christ from the death. And it's that same power that delivers, it overcomes and transforms. So the glory of God, when it's it's been, if we really want the glory of God to be revealed to us, we must diligently ask and seek for it. And then when we, we pray for it, we, we are expecting miracles, we are expecting signs and wonders as we pray. On, you know, it happens to it would happen to our personal life, and as we have gathered here, if we pray for such, I mean, the glory of God to be seen in us, it would manifest. It would manifest in different forms, like I've just said, and it is just unto them that believe. So there's that factor that you have to believe in the glory of God, and so I want us to pray. I want us to pray and ask the Lord, the glory of God, to be revealed unto us. It can be felt, it can be, it can be touched, it's tangible. And so I want it to be revealed unto us. I want us to pray this prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. If you are here, kindly unmute and join me as we pray that the glory of God be manifested, I mean, be revealed unto us in Jesus' name. Let us begin to pray. Amen, amen, amen. Secondly, I want us to declare that we are walking in, in the ever increasing glory of God. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18 says, And we all who with unveiled faces contemplated the Lord's glory are being transformed into his image with an ever-increasing glory, which comes from Lord, who is the Spirit. 
I, I mean, we are declaring that we are walking in, in his ever increasing glory. How do we walk in his glory? The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 3 16, it says, Don't you know that you yourself are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in your midst? And so when 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 our temple, we have become acceptable, pure, holy, and acceptable unto God. Bible says the Spirit of God comes to dwell in us. When we look at the book of um, Acts, when the Spirit of God came onto the believers, the disciples then, you, they didn't go to stay in their corner, but as when the Spirit came, He came onto them themselves, and they went out there to preach. They went out there to do wonders for God. They went out to do signs and wonders. They set the captives free, and that is when, and it's all for the glory of God. That is what me, what it means to walk in 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 the glory of God. And so I want us to declare that we are walking in the ever increasing glory of God. I want us to bring ourselves to that, that time in our life that we want to see God, we want to do things for God. Whatever we do, it should be for God's glory. Our work with him should be for God's glory. Whatever we do unto ourselves, it should be for God's glory. And so I want to declare right now that we are walking in his glory. We are walking in it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Mande ke sablinge manda ka sablinge. Pradishe kambra dante le pradishe kambra dasi si kandar daske. Salvaste ti pradonte le brande li pradishe kambra dante le sasi se kambra. Le pradose si ke tere prende di ke tombra dasi si kambra dante li faraske. Yetaras, yetaras, ti fasi fi se ke pradonta laske. Salibaram pe di per essere dice prosi si cambra donte la vedente la vasi che ti In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I see in the spirit. Please mute if there is noise on your pen. Just mute. Mute briefly. I see a river flowing in the spirit. 
is a river of living water has been given as we speak. And as many as are thirsty, if you would drink from this river, if you would drink, you would thirst no more. I don't know what you've come to this altar with. We're going to have five minutes uninterrupted tongue talking session. Just five minutes. We're going to just blast in tongues. And I want everybody to unmute, to drink from this river. It's flowing. I can see it in the spirit. There's even healing in that river. There are people on this altar that have come here with all kinds of conditions. Bodily healing, that is. The river is beginning to flow. It's beginning to flow. And the Spirit of God says that as we begin to pray, the water level will rise. It will rise. Some will begin to swim in that river. I want you to set your heart right. And as we begin to pray, if you're on this altar, you're better off on muting and praying. Perhaps, peradventure, God will listen to your prayer. Prayer is incense from your heart. It is incense. And so everything can be mixed in at once. Your anxiety, your fear, your pain, your aspirations, your ambition, your hope, your joy, your thanksgiving, your regrets. Everything is mixed in the tone of your voice as you pray in the spirit. That's the beauty of the incense called prayer. And God has seen it fit to give us a river on this day and time. And the river is beginning to flow. And so I'm going to give everybody five minutes of uninterrupted tongues, just blasting in the spirit. Five minutes, nonstop. Are we ready? Let's begin to pray. Let's begin to pray. The river is flowing. It's 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 now. The river is flowing. 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 Thank <laughs> you. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I hear in the spirit. There is a grace being made available. If you don't speak in tongues, if you don't speak in tongues, this river will sweep you away. There's a grace being made available. If you would only believe and you would open your mouth. I wish I had the time to explain. You open your mouth, you speak first, and the spirit gives you utterance. That's how it works. You are filled with the spirit. Just thank God. As you thank God, open your mouth, you begin to thank God. Then as, the, as we say speak, you, you switch it up. You begin to speak whatever comes into your mind. Then the spirit gives you utterance. That's the sequence in the Bible. That's the sequence. So there's that grace being made available on one side. On the other side, if you've desired in God a change of tongues, I hear it very clearly in my spirit. A change of tongues. A change. A change. Let me tell you why this is important. Until you have the gift of diverse tongues, you have just one channel in your dream life. One channel. The third people I'm going to pray for are people that you have a clogginess in your dreams. I see you in the spirit. A fogginess and a cloudiness. You, you have dreams you don't remember. Actually, I'm going to deal with that case first. If you're in that, on the altar today and you have dreams you don't remember, can, you, can I see your hands? We're going to pray for you. I have a very specific instruction. You, you dream. You don't remember what you've seen. And you know that God is trying to communicate with you in the spirit. There's a grace that makes it available. 
Five more seconds. Five, four, three. Okay, I have, oh my God. Okay. Amy, I need you to get on video. You're going to release that grace. That's the person that carries that grace in a very high dimension. You're going to pray for everybody whose hands are raised. The gifts of dreams, but to remember dreams and to be able to, to release, to, to, to write it down. And I'm going to release something called the scribe anointing after she prays. That is the one that insists that everything you receive in the spirit, you can write it down. Because the things that we receive, they belong to us and our children. What good is it if you forget? We are going to pray, my dear. I want as many as can, can stretch their hands towards Amy. That grace will be released today. If you can, just um, stretch your hands towards me. Um, if you can come on video, that's fine. If not, that's fine. But wherever you are, just stretch your hands towards me and then I will pray and I will release that uh, that grace over you right now. This grace is powerful. It is very necessary because for many of us, this is the primary way that the Holy Spirit communicates to us. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift up everyone here before you. Every single person here, Masura Bataliande Barando Fatamande Shada Kande Brada Kande Veli Kande Rabasinia. I feel the anointing. I feel it already flowing. I feel it already flowing towards you. So just have your hearts open and have that hunger for this because that's what's going to cause you to pull as much as you need. Father, I release that grace upon everyone whose hands are lifted up even right now in the name of Jesus. I ask for the grace for dreams, dreams, instructive dreams, expository dreams, maleba konde bratazona in partition dreams. Father, I ask for that grace upon everyone whose hands are lifted right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, for everybody here who dreams who you communicate you show deep things to and they forget them like the enemy coming to steal them before they wake up father i ask that they be blessed right now with a retentive memory a retentive spiritual memory in the name of jesus father when they have these dreams when they have these encounters when they have these uh downloads when they have this this experiences in their dreams father they will retain every last bit of it in the name of jesus father i ask lord that you release upon them the grace the grace the grace to not be slothful with this gift to not be slothful with this grace in the name of jesus that you will give them the grace to write down as much as it is that you show to them whatever the time of the day is what however many times at night it is that they have to pause and write father i ask that you release Release that grace upon them even right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Keep your hand raised. Amen. I'm going to pray a very simple prayer. Keep your hand raised. If you want the scribe anointing, it's a very rare grace in the spirit. The scribe anointing. Father, in the name of Jesus, Amen. I come as your servant. But the grace that you've so graciously placed on my life mm. to document and write down the things that the Spirit of God reveals. Let as many whose hearts are open and whose hearts are sincere receive that grace today. Amen. 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 Thank you, Father. Five people. Six people. Seven. Eight. Amen. Nine, nine people have received it. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being faithful. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Lord. In Amen. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 The other people I want to pray for before we begin to run up the prayers. You're on this altar. You want the gift of speaking in tongues. You want the gift of a new tongue. The grace for your tongues to change. While we pray, mm. Mm. it's a very important grace. And so if you're in that category, just raise your hand so that we know we are praying for somebody. You're, you're asking God for the gift of tongues, or you're asking God for, for your tongues to change. You need a change of tongues because your channel can be mastered. It's like a radio channel. 
Yeah. What I will do is I will pray. As we are praying, as all of us are praying, as we are praying, your heart is open. All you have to do is to be thanking God. Be thanking God. If you're already speaking tongues, use your tongues, but use your mind to be thanking God. And then begin to utter what comes into your mind. If you're trusting God for a change of tongues, oh, I see it so clear in the spirit. My God. Mm. That's what you will be doing. And God will begin to fill you. The spirit of God is beginning to hover. It's starting to move around. It's starting to move around. And if it's your first time, you're trusting God for the grace for speaking in tongues. You open your mouth in faith. This grace is activated by faith. It's a faith gift. Just like you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. This is how you also act activate the grace of speaking in tongues. I'm going to pray. Once I'm done praying, I'll pray a very simple prayer. And once I'm done praying, everybody begins to pray in tongues. And then you just open your mouth and in faith. Through faith, by faith, begin to pray. Father, I thank you for the supply of the Spirit. I thank you because with our covenant with you in this commission, when we call you, you answer. You've always answered. You never leave your children alone. Father, I present this, your children before you. They want a new way of communicating with you. Yes, yes, yes. People's hearts are being filled already, I see in the spirit. I ask, oh God, for those that speak in tongues already, I ask, oh God, for a different tongue, a different language in the spirit. Would you be so faithful, Father, to fill them, breathe over them, a new tongue in the spirit, a new tongue. With a new tongue will I speak to these people, with the stammering of the lips and with a new tongue. Father, I ask, oh God, that as we begin to praise your name, that you fill everybody whose hearts are thirsty and who are trusting you for grace, for a new tongue, God, to just speak in tongues. Everybody begin to pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Begin to pray. Masanda <laughs> I'm <laughs> <laughs> 
Amen. Amen. Just those people, everybody else muted, just those people whose hands were raised, please, you are the only ones that are going to pray now. We're all just going to just wait for you to pray for a one full minute. If you've received the grace, just use it. Even if it's one word, just say what comes to your mind. Everybody else stay muted. Let everybody else who raise their hand. Let them be the only ones who pray. That's the instruction from the Spirit. Please go ahead and begin to pray and thank God in your own way, in the, in the Spirit. Begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Keep singing. Keep singing. Go on. Yeah, that's the spirit of God. Yeah. Mm. My God, in Jesus' name we pray. My sister, I was yeah. interpreting the tongue you were singing. You were singing of the tales of God's faithfulness in your life. You were singing of the tales of God's faithfulness. Father, we thank you for putting your hand upon your people. Thank you for the gift of tongues. Thank you for the gift of new tongues, new ways of speaking in tongues. Thank you for visiting us. As we go into the service, Father, would you anoint your vessel? Let us speak words that are spirit and life. Let our souls be edified. Let dead things come into life because you will speak through her. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you. There's somebody else that was on this call. You did not raise your hand, but you received that grace. You received that grace. Thank you, Father. For every good and perfect gift comes from God. We love you. We adore you. Take all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thanks to everyone who led the powerful prayer sessions. Um, before we go into sharing the word today, I want to pray for a few people. 
there are not many. I think there are at least three of you on the call. And what I see is that you have been under intense, um, I would say, attack. There's no other way to describe it by the enemy, and it has impacted your state of mind. I don't know if it's that you've been dealing with issues that have persisted or what it is, but I saw very clearly that there are th at least three ladies here today who need the hand of God to be upon them, to restore their state of mind, to restore the peace in their mind. I don't know if it's the form of anxiety. I don't know if it's the form of depression. I don't know if it's just constant worry. I don't know if it's confusion. But what I can see is that the hand of the enemy you know, has has impacted your mind in one way or another. Maybe things you have been waiting for, you, you are not seeing just a level of despair, a level of just, actually there's one of you that I saw that it's actually a very, I don't want to use the word critical, but it is, it is there. It is that serious. And you have been doing your best to manage it, to, to put it together. If you are here, I want you to raise your hands. I want you to raise your hand and I'm going to pray with you. The Holy Spirit showed me very clearly there's at least three of you. There's at least three of you who have been battling things in your personal life that have impacted your mental health. It's impacted the way that you, you work, it's impacted your sleep. If you are here, I'm going to pray with you. We have to go into the teaching, so please, in the next five seconds, if you are here, just raise your hand. Yes, if 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 that describes you, I saw very clearly. I know that there are other people with other kinds of ailments that are present here. But what I saw are people with ailments that are, you know, within the space of the mind, anxiety, worry, overthinking, all of that. There's at least one person that it's almost at a point of emergency. You've been trying to, to self, you know, medicate. You've been trying to just ignore it, but it's not something you ignore. And I felt the power of God, the healing power present here as Damala was praying. And so I'm going to pray with you. And I know that God is going to break that thing that has held you down. So if you're here, just stretch your hand towards me. And please believe me when I say that the healing power is present even right now. If you have been dealing with any kind of situation that has impacted your mental health, if you are dealing, whatever it may be, I don't care what the source of it is, whether, you know, it's a uh, medical situation. I don't care what it is. If you have been dealing with any kind of mental health issue or just any issue that has impacted your mental health or your state of mind, just raise your hand. I'm going to pray with you in the next five seconds and we're going to go into the teaching. One, two, three, four, five. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift up this ladies before you. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for their lives. I thank you for each one of them, and I thank you for that you have chosen this time to visit them and their situations. Even right now, Father, I release your power in their direction to heal them and to bring peace to their mind in the name of Jesus. There are two specifically that need an immediate touch right now that need an immediate touch right now. Father, I ask that you locate those two wherever they may be and touch them, touch them, touch them, touch them. Let there be a touch, let there be a touch, an unmistakable touch wheresoever they are right now. Let that touch bring peace to their members. Let that touch bring peace to their minds in the name of Jesus. Father, I rebuke the activity of the enemy in the minds of these ladies in the name of Jesus. I speak to their minds and I say receive peace even right now in the name of Jesus. I speak to that storm that has been brewing, that has been going on and on. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I speak to that storm that has been going. Mm. Father, in the name of Jesus, as many as are suffering this situation as a result of some attack, some arrow of the enemy, what in any way, Father, I break its hold. I break its hold. I break its hold right now in the name of Jesus. 
I release the yoke breaking anointing even over them right now in the name of Jesus. I speak restoration to their minds in the name of Jesus. And once again, I speak to that storm and I say, be still, be still, be still in the name of Jesus. I speak a sound mind. I release the spirit of a sound mind over every one of these ladies, even right now in the name of Jesus. Everywhere where they have suffered any, uh, any discomfort, anywhere that they have suffered any attacks in their mind, I release the spirit of a sound mind to take over their system in the name of Jesus. We shut down the voice of the enemy. We shut down every arrow of the enemy aimed at their mind. I ask, Father, from today, let their liberty be sure. Let their liberty be sure. Let their liberty be sure. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you very Amen. much, everyone. Um, mm, that anointing is still present. <laughs> and what's going to happen is even as this session progresses today, it's still going to continue to flow. It's still going to continue to flow through the group and through the people who, um, you know, indicated their need in this area. It's 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 strong and it's um it's presence specifically to break that hold in your life. And I thank you, Jesus, because I know that today they receive their liberty, um, and they will go back and not suffer those same situations anymore. In the name of Jesus, Amen, Amen. Thanks everyone for um, joining today. You know, once again, thank you to the prayer leaders. You know, God bless you all. Um, I appreciate your sacrifice. I appreciate your time. And I thank everyone who has taken out the time to join the Bible study today. So I'll jump into the word really quickly today so that we can finish on time. I plan to finish on time, but we'll see how we can do with that. But Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for today. I thank you for yet another opportunity to speak to everyone. I ask, Lord, that even as we share this time of fellowship in your presence, I ask, Lord, that you will take charge and that you will speak through my vessel. Lord, I ask that you will speak to the hearts of everyone who's present here. I ask, Lord, that you will release their own word, the sent word that they need today into their hearts in the name of Jesus. I ask that you take charge of the direction of the a discussion today of the teaching today that lord every single person who will listen to me will hear you and not me in the name of jesus thank you father in jesus name i pray amen amen again um as you know we're still on the grace for access and by the help of god i believe this should be the last teaching um, we've started this whole thing since Monday. We took another portion of it on Wednesday, and today is supposed to be the final uh, concluding part of this. So I pray to God, to God for grace to cover, you know, everything that needs to be covered in this um, grace for access. My, my, my prayer, my desire is that, you know, when we all leave today, um, you know, we will, we will know one, that something has shifted in our lives, and two, we will know what we must do to see, you know, the results that we need to see. So before I go into the teaching today, I do want to share something that I think is very important, um, and the Holy Spirit laid it on my heart, um, because when we talk about the grace for access, obviously it's only right to desire it, and it's only right to ask for it, but the one thing that the Holy Spirit laid in my heart to share with you is that when you ask for the grace for access and God decides to answer that and you begin to see certain things in your life, it is important that you actually also build spiritual capacity. It, that capacity that you build is what's going to be able to, I would say, um, help you operate properly within the boundaries of the grace. Because the grace for access, as we've described and as we've shared, you know, in the last few sessions, can be very deep. OK, it can go very deep. And so as you grow in God, you know, different layers of access will become available. But it is important that you, one, have the wisdom and you also have the capacity to steward and properly handle whatever is handed to you, you know, by virtue of this grace. And an example that comes to mind is the example of um, Zechariah in the Bible, the priest. I think we're familiar with the story, the father of John the Baptist, right? This was a man who had access and he had a visitation from an angel who told him, you know, your wife is going to have a son. He's going to be called this and he's going to be called that. Um, and this is what he's going to do rather um, on the earth. And Zechariah, I guess, perhaps didn't... <laughs> I mean, he had been a priest for a long time, but he, he perhaps did not have the capacity to receive that level of um, 
would I say, intel from God. And so, you know, he questioned it. He was saying, how is this possible? You know, is, you know, can this really be? And as a result of that, the angel had to seize his speech. And so he was dumb up until the time that uh, John was born and he could declare the name because there are levels of access that when you get to, you have to have the spiritual wisdom and capacity to steward that access. So this was a very critical uh, thing that was going on that God was doing, right? There had been no prophets for a long time, you know, amongst the children of Israel. And God was sending that prophet who would not just be the first prophet after such a long time, but will actually forerun the ministry of Jesus Christ. And he shared that information with Zechariah, but one way or another, he wasn't fully able to receive it properly. And, you know, the angel had to seal his speech so that he doesn't accidentally mess up what's going on and what's being done um, by saying the wrong thing. So it's one, it's just, uh, you know, uh, something that the Holy Spirit laid on my heart to share with you. And the best way that you build capacity in the things of the spirit is actually not just prayers, but studying the word of God. When you spend time in the word of God, it actually begins to reside in you. It truly does enlarge your capacity. And so when you start getting to certain portions, certain levels of your relationship with God, where he's sharing some deep things, where he's sharing some strong things with you, you also have the wisdom to handle it. And speaking of wisdom, another example that comes to mind on that topic is actually Joseph. So many times when we say the story of Joseph, we say, oh, it was important for him to be sold to slavery because that was going to be, you know, God's you know, strategy for saving the children of Israel. But I will have, you know, that God is never limited. He's never lost for, at a loss for options and how to bring his will to pass. So, yes, God was still able to use the path, the, the, the prison journey of Joseph to bring him into um, position of prime minister in Egypt. But he didn't have to go that way. So Joseph at an early age had access to things of the spirit. And so he would have these dreams. The healing anointing is still flowing very strongly. I just want to say one prayer for anyone else who's on this platform today, who came here with one ailment or another. Father, I ask that the power of God moves in their direction right now to heal them in the name of Jesus, whatever the conditions may be. Father, I ask that your healing grace flow and move in their direction even now in the name of Jesus. Amen. So with Joseph, his issue was that he did not have the wisdom to store that information. So he was given this access. He was told what he was going to be. He was shown that his siblings will bow to him. But the wisdom to actually handle that information was not present. And so he used that information. And, you know, I was talking about it, all of that you know, moved his brothers to jealousy and, want, you know, we know how the story ends for Joseph. So I say that because as we begin to press into God and as we begin to to, to sincerely, you know, uh, would I say ask for access, even as we have received this grace, you know, we're going to begin to receive certain information and we will need the wisdom of God to handle it properly. Okay. So some of you will begin to see things. You might start to inquire about things in your family. You may start to inquire about things that have prevailed or persisted within your family, and you might begin to receive this information. So the Spirit of the Lord wants me to tell you today that you should be very mindful to use wisdom to handle the information that you're given. There are lots of people online and all of that. It's like they tarry in the presence of God just to be able to go say, oh, God showed me this. God said this to me. You know, but that's not really what the goal of access is. It's supposed to allow us, you know, achieve things, you know, um, for God, not to, you know, show that, oh, we know this and we know that that's, that's not what this is about. So it's my, it, it's just, I want to release that, you know, would I say sort of warning to everyone right now, because God is a diligent rewarder of them that seek him. So as you begin to press into God, he is going to begin to show you things. So I pray that you receive the wisdom that you need and the, the capacity that you need to one, receive some very strong things you might receive from God. Because God may show you things about family members. He may show you things about friends, you know, may show you things about existing relationships that you're in. I ask, I pray that you have the capacity to receive it. 
And then I also pray that you have the wisdom to handle it because some of this information is not for you to go out and like, you know, share or talk about or like, you know, go fight certain things in, you know, in your own strength. That's not what it's about. So I trust that the Holy Spirit will continue to do this work um, and and um, and help us in this area. So let me get into the teaching for today. Um, so we spent some time just really exploring what access might look like in this, you know, in the spiritual uh, way, and then what access might look like um, in the world of men. And so today, what I want to do is really spend time to help us understand how to actually use this grace for access that you have, because you could have something and not benefit from it because you don't understand how to use it. And so sometimes, you you know, when you think that what you need is um, that grace, it might be that you actually have that grace, you just don't know how to use it. So I was actually uh, recently remembering my days when I used to work in the office, um, which I honestly don't really miss. Um, I really have enjoyed working from home the last few years. And so I remember a particular incident that happened to me in the office that kind of shook me. So the way that my office is, and I think most offices are that way, um, you know, everybody who's going to gain access into the building has to have, a, you know, that key badge. I guess that's what you call it, that badge, right? You know, so you badge into the office, you know, at whatever time and you use it throughout the day, right? So if you're going into the building, you need that badge. If you're maybe going to some other wing of the building, you need that badge and all of that. So that key, you know, typically is, you know, how you, you know, have access to the building. So I remember one time that, and actually it was more than one time, I know it used to happen to me a couple of times when I'd be in a hurry leaving the house in the morning. And so by the time I get to work, I don't have my badge. And so if I had to go back to, you know, the house to pick it up, it just takes a long time. And so it it, it was usually stressful, especially if it happened like in the winter, because now you're standing outside the building and you're cold. So usually what used to happen was I would have to, I had this work friend, work uh, bestie, so I would have to, you know, send her a message hoping that she's actually at work already before me um, to come open the door for me um, or something like that. And then sometimes what I would actually do, especially if my work friend was not in the office. So what I typically would do was I would sometimes wait um, for somebody who was coming into the office and I would just walk in behind them. And I remember one day there was this man, I don't know why he just decided to be so pressed about me, but um, I don't remember if I walked in behind him or somebody else and he saw me and he got so upset and he's like, no, you know, why would you, you know, come in with the person? And he was like, oh, I have to verify with security and all of that. I was like, I don't know why this man has been extra, but okay. And when I was thinking about this story, it actually made me smile because it's, kind of shed, you know, some light on what access typically looks like, right? So based on this story, there are a few things that I want to point out before I start to drill into it. One, I know we already talked about the aspect of access and, you know, the situation of, um, uh, you know, the enemy setting up doors, you know, around us, gates around us to block us off so that we don't have access into certain things that we typically should have access to. I want to just point out one thing. First of all, based on the story of, you know, just me struggling to get into the building, one thing is clear here is the fact that I, in fact, already had legal access into the building. I, in fact, had a badge. So the question was not whether I had access or not. It was whether I could actually use it in that moment. That was, you know, the issue of contention. So if they went into the system, obviously they'd see my name and see that I was authorized. But for some reason, you know, my fault really, I couldn't actually get into the building. And so when we talk about access, this is really what happens with a lot of people is that you've prayed, you've received impartations and many things have happened and the grace for access has been granted. But in reality, it's not looking like it because <clears throat> you're like how I was, where despite the fact that I actually had authorized access into the building, I still couldn't get in. So like I said, on the one hand, there's the aspect of the enemy who actually, um, you know, puts blockers and puts doors and, and gates. The Bible says, you know, the God of this world, you know, blinds the eyes of people so that they don't see certain things. But then there's also another aspect that we must be aware of when we start to drill into like really gaining access into things. And if we look at 1 Corinthians 2 from verse 6 to 8, it says here, it says, however, we speak wisdom among those who are mature. 
yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew, for had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. So what I'm trying to point out to you here is this. It's not everything that you are blocked from or, you know, that you don't have access to that has been done by the enemy. It's not all the time that is the enemy that has blocked you. Sometimes what you're facing is what I've just read out here in 1 Corinthians 2 from verse 6 to 8. It is the fact that God himself has kept many things hidden for us. Because if you read this here, it's not saying that he has hidden it from us. It's very clear who these things are hidden from. It's hidden from the rulers of this age. But for us, it has been kept for us. It says we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God before, um, ordained before the ages for our glory. So yes, these things are hidden. It would be nice if they were just available on surface level, but the reality is they are hidden. And the Bible says exactly why they were hidden, for our glory. And it says that they were hidden not just for our glory, but to keep out, keep the enemy out of our affairs. So you find that in that situation of the building that I was talking about, like even when you have access into the building, there are some times when like maybe you're trying to get back into the um, the building from one end of the building to another. And then it's, you know, it's sealed off like you can't you still have to badge in, even though you've come into the standard um, door. And the whole reason, you know, in summary for the, the whole, you know, badging in and out is security, security, not to keep the employees out of the building but to keep intruders out, to keep unauthorized people out of the building for the safety of, of the employees so that they can, you know, do their work. So some of these things that are not accessible, that it would be good if you had access to them, they are hidden, but they're actually hidden by God for us. That's why the Bible says it's the glory of, you know, God to conceal a thing, but then for man to, to search it out. God intends that, that you will actually do the work of getting these things. So now your problem is no longer access. You have access through Christ. The grace has been released to you. The question is if you're actually able to, you know, lay hold of these things. That's really what it comes down to. Okay. So now given that example of my struggle at the door of our office, it helped me to highlight three distinct ways that we might actually gain access, you know, legally into realms, into revelations, into certain things in God. And so like I was explaining, first of all, if I had my key, I would just get in there. I would just get into the building. It's that simple. But since I didn't have my key, the other option would be to wait for somebody who has access who has their key to let me into the building. But you know, the downside of this thing is this. If you happen to come to the building during a time that's not the typical entry time, like, oh, would I say uh, resumption time? It means that there will be less foot traffic. So I remember one time that I, you know, it so happened to me like that. I can't remember. I think maybe I had stepped, I had gone home for lunch and then I came back and I couldn't get back into the building. So usually what I would try to do is that, you know, the door is huge and there's typically this little hole in the toe, not too small, but, you know, sometimes I would watch there and I would just look and see like if someone was coming because that door was placed right by the restroom. So it meant that if anybody was coming to the restroom, you know, I could maybe like, you know, wave at them and get their attention and get them to open the door for me. But what that meant was that I had to be there for a really long time, right? So essentially, it was either I had my key with me or somebody was walking into the building um, and I could go in with them or I had to get the attention of someone in there to come open the door for me from the inside and I would get in. So now I want to just look at these three different ways, but the, uh, the last way that I described is where I want to actually spend more time because I feel that that tends to be the place where a lot of us as believers get hung up. So let's look at the first instance of having the key to get into a building. Our access to anything, whether it's in the spirit or something that we want to receive from God that needs to manifest here on earth, is the Holy Spirit. 
I'm not going to spend too much time here because I've actually taught a whole message on how to access things in God. The Bible records here in that verse I read earlier in 1 Corinthians 2, it says that these things, it said we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. The hidden wisdom, you know, which God ordained. So we're talking about things that are actually deliberately hidden. And usually in order to uncover those things, you need the right access. So I, I, I thank God for that prayer that Damola raised earlier today, because it actually touches very, very, uh, very precisely on this one key. Because the one way that we get to access some of these deep things um, that are in God, um, Ola, if you're not displaying the uh, verse, you can just leave my, you can just like not bother displaying the verse on the screen if it's not coming up because it's a black screen here. So if it's not showing, you can just stop sharing your screen. It's it's okay. The one way that we get to access these things that are in God, these mysteries, is through the gift of praying in tongues. So when Damola raised a prayer today and said that he wanted people to receive, you know, new tongues, and he highlighted the need for diverse tongues, I just, I you know, I, I thanked God for that because it was just a very clear, you know, pointer to what I was going to mention today. Because here's the thing is this, speaking in tongues is not one directional. I, like I said, I've taught a whole message on this before. There are times when you're speaking in certain tongues and what you're doing with those tongues is you're really doing intercession and it's clear. And so when Jamala was saying, you know, people, you know, you have to have diverse tongues. This is one of the reasons why. Because one of the keys to accessing these mysteries let me say this again. Let me just paint this picture again. If something has been hidden, has been wrapped in a mystery so that the rulers of this age you know, don't have access to it, it means that the way that you even obtain it as well will be very, I would say, you know, not, not, not out there on the surface and in the open. You will have to have a very specialized key to access it. And that's what speaking in tongues does for you. So how do you use this? It's really by engaging the Holy Spirit, engaging the Holy Spirit on a prayer of inquiry. And it has to be deliberate. So when you go to pray in tongues, many times, you know, because we're not praying in our understanding, we don't understand that there is a very clear link between the spirit, the mind, and the body in achieving certain things, in, in actually getting certain kinds of results. What happens when we want to engage the Holy Spirit in this dimension? And, and please listen very clearly because it has to be deliberate. It has to be specific. You don't just show up in your prayer closet and just rabba, 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 and think, you know, expect to see, you know, uh, or receive the answers that you're looking for. No, you have to engage the Holy Spirit very specifically on this. It is a key, not just, just a whole bunch of keys. No, you are trying to get a specific key. And so when you engage the Holy Spirit in this manner, the first thing is that your prayer language also has to be in the encoded format as well. It is very effective when you pray in the Spirit. Now, don't get me wrong. It doesn't mean you cannot say, oh, Father, I'd like to know this and I'd like to know that. Best believe it actually does work as well. But there are certain levels of detail that you're looking for that one, only the Holy Spirit can help you ask it with accuracy. And two, only him can reach the points in the spirit where they are hidden to receive them and give them to you. So many times what we're doing when we pray in the spirit, it's not always intercession. There is an aspect of it that has to do with making inquiries from the Holy Spirit. And when you do this, your mind has to be involved. Your mind has to be active. And I will just explain very briefly what that mechanism looks like, because that's the point of our meeting today, is so that you actually see how to use this grace for access. Because it's not that you are, unauthor you are not authorized, you are authorized. It's a function of how you actually get access. So one of the ways is using this key of engaging the Holy Spirit to do a search for you, to find information, to find things and make them available to you. So when you pray in tongues for this specific purpose, your mind has to be involved. Why? Because you're going to come to God with that specific need in your heart, 
in your mind, it's almost like your heart is go, your mind is going to be like a tree. And you're going to have that, that desire, that prayer point, that whatever it is, you're going to place it on that tree that is your mind. And then you begin to engage the Holy Spirit in a language that only he understands. Because what we don't want is to spend so much time praying only for the prince of the power of the air to intercept, you know, our, our prayers. So that's why we engage that mysterious language, praying in tongues, so that it's a one way, it's a secured line of communication between us and the Holy Spirit. So you hold that request that you have, you hold that question that you have in your heart and you sit down and pray. This is not an absent-minded type of prayer. So when you do prayers where you're walking around and like pray, maybe doing other things in the house, that works for certain things. But when you need to get specific information, details, access from the Holy Spirit, you don't do it walking around the room. You don't do it walking, you don't do it absent minded, you don't do it chit chatting, you don't do it texting people or whatever. You find a time where there's no distraction and you sit down, you hold that thing in your mind and you engage the Holy Spirit with your mouth. Okay, so like I said, all of your faculties are involved, your body, your mind and your spirit. With your spirit, you are communicating to the Holy Spirit when you speak in tongues. But with your mouth, you are letting it out. This is not a I prayed in my heart type prayer. No. You open your mouth. You let out your prayers by the help of the Holy Spirit in the language of the spirit while holding that request in your heart. That is how you use this access. That is how you use this key of access. OK, that's how you get the Holy Spirit to bring information to you. I don't have the time to go into it, you know, in depth, but maybe we will find that message and I will share it because I, I really explained why that works, why that happens. It was actually how Jesus described it. Back when Jesus was on the earth, a prayer of inquiry was as simple as walking up to Jesus and saying, who sinned that this man was born blind? It was that simple. And you get an answer right away and you're like, mm, thank you. And you go home. But with Jesus no longer being on the earth, the only resource we have to getting those kinds of answers are the Holy Spirit. And so if you're going to be able to continue to get that kind of insight from God, as people could get from Jesus when he was on earth, we must engage the Holy Spirit in the way that he operates. And this is how you get insight from the Holy Spirit. So what happens is when you spend that time with your desire or your question or whatever it is in your heart, Whatever it may be, it may be inquiry about something going on in your life. It may be literally asking God for strategy in your work or for your family or for a child that, you know, maybe you're trying to figure out how to, you know, parent them better. Whatever it may be, you hold that matter in your heart and you engage the Holy Spirit in tongues. What's going to happen is that very, very likely you will start to receive things even right there and then when you're praying from the Holy Spirit. But because many of us are not very mature and, you know, approaching him in this manner, sometimes we think, oh, you know, it's just my mind. And I know that that's where a lot of us, you know, get stuck most times. Because I know I had that time of my walk with God when I was like, oh, I don't know if this is my mind or if this is the Holy Spirit. When you engage the Holy Spirit deliberately like that, he will begin to communicate. The same way you are traveling to him, you know, using your mouth, engaging with your mind and speaking, you know, uh, words from your spirit to the spirit. That's the same way that information is going to get distilled back to you. It will travel through your spirit and go through your mind as well. So if you're still at that point where you're wondering, oh, you know, maybe it's just my mind because I didn't hear a loud voice. No, because the Holy Spirit will communicate these things to you back through your mind. Then you can implement it. And for some people who maybe, you know, you have a noisy mind or you just have not even developed that aspect of your spirit where you can actually hear and pick where you're, you know, praying. It will so happen that the Holy Spirit will still distill that answer to you when you lay down to sleep at night. Yes. The Bible says um, it's in Job. It says, I, I forget how it was put exactly. The Bible says that the, the um, God seals the instruction for man in a dream of the night when he's laying down in his bed. He uses that term, seals it, so that there is no question, there is no mistake as far as like, oh, maybe I didn't understand it. God will sometimes use that. You know, he says in the dream of the night, God will seal the instruction, you know, for a man. So when you pray in tongues like that, please know that you're not just hoping 
understand that you're actually implement that it's like if I take an actual key to open a door, I'm not hoping the door opens. I know that the door should open because that's the key. So I'm telling you right now that this is the key to obtaining insight from the Holy Spirit, to obtaining access to revelations and things that you need to get from the Holy Spirit. This is the key, even if that is, you know, in, 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 in your world here. So it's not just trying to get information from the Holy Spirit. It's trying to get access into things. When you're praying about getting into certain spaces, about getting access to certain people, you hold that thing in your heart just like that. And you pray about it till the Holy Spirit releases something back to you. And you receive it with clarity. I said I don't want to spend much time here, um, so I'm going to move on. But please understand that the Holy Spirit is your first access point, is the key that gets you in there. Please, can everyone mute? If somebody is off mute, I can hear the noise in the background. So please, okay. That's your first access point. Okay. The next level is what I said earlier, where you wait for somebody who has access to allow you get into the building. And I touched on this as well. I think it was on Wednesday that there are people who already have that grace for access. And so if you have not grown or developed to a place where you can actually gain or obtain that insight from the Holy Spirit directly, your best bet is to find people who have access and stay around them and let them bless you. Don't ignore the role of men. Don't ignore the role of men in your work with God. I shared on Wednesday, the, one, the revelation I got one time in a trance <clears throat> from the Holy Spirit. I don't even know why it came, but it came very clearly. It says access is not always a function of you having the you know, authorization or credentials to get into somewhere. Sometimes it's a function of you being attached to somebody who does have access and then that person is your means to getting in there. So don't downplay the place of men. There are people who have strong levels of access. So if you find yourself start struggling, standing in front of a door, just know that sometimes you need to go find people. This is not to belittle the place for developing your own self. Because what happened is the day that you get disconnected from these people, you will really understand that you were standing, you know, in another man's access. I taught another message a while ago on, you know, building, you know, spirit cities. Because I remember I was in Covenant University and, you know, I really thought I was doing the thing, right? Because I was there and, you know, Covenant University is a church school, church, you know, prayers going on all around, so much going on. And then I graduated and real life hit. And I realized that I was simply basking in the access that Pa Oyedekbo had built over the decades of his work with God. And so it meant that I needed to now begin to dig, begin to dig and begin to gain my own level of access. Also, the prayer altar, I've said that before. When we gather like that to pray, what we're doing is we are sharing resources. So some people have levels of access that when we pray certain prayers alone, it's not able to, to help us hit certain you know, results. But when we come and gather together on the altar, people are sharing their levels of access and we're able to jump in and we're able to take you know, something out of it. We're able to make use of it. So that's why when we say unmute, that's why, that's partly why. Because like Damala said, our prayers rise up as an incense to God. And so it is that once everybody's prayer and everybody's voice is rising up together like that, that is how yours manages to get through as well. Remember the analogy I said that sometimes access is not because you yourself have the credentials. It's because somebody else has it. So there are people on the altar who have certain graces, who have certain levels of access. And so by the time they are praying and their voices are mixing up, their prayers are coming up as are getting, uh, you know, our prayers are getting in there. So it's all mixing up as incense to God. And that's how yours manages to get past certain places that it may have been blocked off from in the past. That's why the Bible says to not, you know, um, to not uh, forsake the gathering of the brethren. This is why. This is why. So you hear the, 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 the term corporate anointing. This is what it's about. It's a real thing. There are certain things that don't get achieved when people stand or try to achieve them alone. But when you come in a corporate setting, it becomes very available. So now I want to spend the last, you know, uh, 30 minutes on the uh, part that I would say is the key thing that I want us to walk away with today, because the others I've touched on uh, briefly before. 
The last aspect is the aspect that I mentioned where I said I could stand in front of that door hoping that somebody will come and answer me. But the reality is that if nobody ever shows up trying to get into the building or if nobody ever shows up inside the building walking towards the door, it means that I'm stuck there. It means that I will stand there as long as it takes. But you see what the Bible says in Matthew 7, 7. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. And finally, knock and the door shall be opened unto you. So that last example, I, I, I'm not even going to lie. I used to, I used to do that a lot because I was like, I was kind of embarrassed that I showed up at work without my key. So instead of knocking, I would stand there at that door, waiting, hoping that somebody would show up. Then I would like wave at them like this. Hopefully they even see me because sometimes people are texting and they're walking. So they're not even looking in that tiny glass hole in the door. And I would just be there. Whereas there were seats close to the door. And so if I just would have knocked, somebody at least would have heard, you know, the sound on the door and would have opened the door for me. Friends, today, this is where I want to spend time because I think that this is the aspect where many of us have not really understood how to operate. So when we say ask the Holy Spirit, many of us already understand, okay, we just, we go, we pray. So all I, all I was trying to do today was just, you know, give you more clarity to how you actually do that aspect. Then many of us understand the aspect of, you know, um, gaining access through other people. It's one of the things that, you know, it, it has been used for good and it has also been used for bad because many times people have found themselves, you know, uh, trying to get access through people who, you know, they themselves have, you know, questionable character and then it leads to all kinds of things. But this aspect of knocking, it is one that I hope that we leave here with because it's actually going to, I would say, apply more to how you actually see this gift for access actualized in real life. So the aspect of aspect of asking, um, I use that more so for like, you know, gaining access to things in the spirit. The Bible is very specific when it says, you know, um, ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knocking. That's the last level. That is the last level. That is the last level. And when many people get tired or don't understand that they actually have to do that or engage. The Bible says, um, you know, uh, it says a great door and an effectual is open, you know, is, is before me. But there are many adversaries. Many times what we do is that instead of us to follow that last, you know, part of Matthew 7, 7 that says knock and the door shall be open. Many times we do what I was doing. We actually just stand there at the door. So many times we think we're knocking. We will tell people, so when we even come to meet, you know, like maybe a pastor or someone to talk about things that we're dealing with, we'll be like, well, I've tried this, I've done that and all of that. And, and we think that we're knocking, but what we're doing is we're actually just standing outside a door. When it says a great door and an effectual is before us, it requires you actually engaging that door. It requires you actually engaging that door. So many times we'll stand in front of a door. It's not every time that you stand in front of a door that that door will be open and you just get to walk in. If the door was opened by somebody else, maybe you get a walk in, or maybe that's a door that's not heavily guarded. And so you just walk in. But many times what we do is we are standing in front of a door and instead of us to knock, we, we're not knocking. We'll be there. We'll, we'll be doing what I was doing, where I was shy, embarrassed. And so I'm like whispering, you know, I'm trying, I'm hoping that someone sees me. But the Bible does not say stand in front of the door and somebody will come open it for you when they see you. It says knock. You must be willing to engage that door. And it was kind of humbling when the Holy Spirit used this example for me of my own, you know, uh, silliness to explain it because I'm like, okay, this is real. And so many of us stand there days, weeks, months, years, and we don't get results because the simple instruction was to knock, but we're not knocking. We think that we're going to stand in front of a door and we're going to ask. We think that we're going to stand in front of a door and keep seeking. There's no need to seek anymore. When you're asking, you're asking for direction. You're asking for guidance. When you seek, that's you trying to navigate your way to the door. But when you get to the door, you must knock. That is the principle. You must knock. So it's, it's good that you've asked for directions. It's also good that you've you know, spent time seeking. You've, you've, you've gone through the help of people who know the way. And now you've been pointed towards the door and you're in front of the door. 
but you must knock. Many of us actually don't knock. Many of us don't knock. And the thing with this is this. I've said this before. One of the best things that we can do as parents, because many of us are either parents or will one day be parents, whether physically or spiritually, or even both. One of the best things that you can do for people that will come after you is actually helping them to open these doors. So even if you don't think that you need the door, even if you don't think that the door will benefit you, you don't understand that when, they, when parents say, oh, where I stop is where you're going to start. When that prayer is made, do you really understand that your efforts, the work that you do is what your, your children will benefit from? A prime example was David. A prime example was David. David labored so much for, for his son. He labored so much for Solomon that at the time Solomon finally stepped into, you know, office, stepped on, you know, into the palace as king, David had done so much for him. David had labored. He had built relationships. He had obtained the blueprint for the, the you know, the, the house of God. He had done so much. So Solomon did not step into this thing, literally trying to build from scratch. He started from where his father stopped. That's the reality of access. So when we say we, we need to knock, this is exactly what we need to do. So there's, a, there's that example of that man, that lame man that was at um, Bethesda when, you know, uh, the Bible says that, uh, you know, every now and then an angel will show up who will stir the water and then those who were there and dipped in the water, they will get healed. And this man, he has sat there for years. He has sat there for years. And when they finally asked him that, why are you still here saying, do you have anybody that will put him in when the angel stirred the water? This is how many of us look when we are in front of those doors. Saying, oh, I was waiting for somebody from inside to open. You don't, you're not, you don't wait. If you're at a door, that's the instruction is that you knock. So even God would have done so much work to bring us to certain doors. Why? Because he knows that he has given us the ability to knock. But somehow we end up still standing by them or even watch me walk past the doors. And then we end up still being upset at God. Whereas it's no longer in God's hand. He has put you in front of the door. Let me tell you, the Bible says that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly, far above that which we may ask or think, according to the power that works in us. Did you hear that? According to the power that works in us. If there is no other power that you have, is the power to knock. If you, can, if you can't point to any other thing that you can say, oh, I have the power to achieve this, you at least have the power to knock. So it means that what God is going to do, this abundantly, exceedingly, and far, and all of that, is according to the power that you have. That power is your right to knock. So until you knock, God will bring you to doors. You will ask God for doors. You will keep praying to God for open doors. One thing with God is that he's not really into spoon feeding people. So when you ask God for doors, he will give you doors, but he's not necessarily going to be handholding you to walk through the doors. He said he's going to do abundantly, extremely far above all of that, right? He said, according to the power that works in us, that power resides in you. It's not God that would be, give you a door. It's not God that will bring you to the door and still be the one to knock on that door for you. So some of the frustrations that we may have, you know, uh, encountered at one point to our lives or another, it's not necessarily that God delayed us. It's not necessarily that God didn't answer us. It's that he has brought us to these doors that hold the possibilities of everything that we're asking for. But what, what we have not done is that we have not knocked. We are yet to knock. So having said that, I want to just share one very powerful way Listen, if you if you hear this thing clearly and you live here today and you apply it, I'm, listen, I speak by, by God. Your life will not be the same. It will not be the same. One of the most powerful ways of knocking on these doors is by taking prophetic action. So the principle is knocking. Now, these doors that we see, they're not physical doors. So it's not like we're actually going to knock on a door. But the way that you actually knock is by taking prophetic action. If you are somebody who makes notes, please note it somewhere. If you don't remember anything else that I said today, remember this one. One of the very powerful ways that you actually use the graceful access that has been made available for you is by taking prophetic action. 
action. So doors have been made available. You have been granted access. But the last piece of this is that you must take prophetic action. I remember one time we had a man who came from Niger um, and he stayed with us for a while. He was actually a family friend and we needed his expertise um, for one you know, reason or another. But anyway, so one day we actually sat and we were talking with him. I don't even recall if we were both talking with him at the same time or if it was Damola that was talking to him. So one of the things that this man does, because he's a businessman and he does many things, and one of the things that he actually does is that he actually builds, he constructs pools you know, swimming pools, both, you know, uh, residentially and commercially, he he uh, he constructs pools. And so, you know, we're talking to him, just trying to learn from him and all of that, because like I said, people, <laughs> people, when they have access, don't like, don't, don't take it for granted. So we're just trying to find out, like, how did you even get into this? How did you even get into the business and all of that? And this man's story was the most, it was the most shocking story. So this man had traveled somewhere. I forget what he went there for. And he was staying at a hotel. I think it was in Vegas. Was it in Vegas? Or maybe it was somewhere in the UK, not even in the US. But yeah, it was this Vegas. man had Vegas. It was Vegas, right? Good. Because a lot of those, you know, uh, rooms, they are very massive. So they're able to use them for conferences and things like that. So this man said that one day he came out of his room um, and he saw many people. And he saw them walking into a conference room. Remember that this man came here for a completely different purpose. So he saw all these people walking inside there and he saw like, you know, banners and stuff like that. So he asked someone, like, what are they doing inside that place? And the person said, oh, it's a conference for, you know, uh, professional pool builders. This man who came from Nigeria and had no purpose there, but he's a businessman. You know what this man did? I don't even know if he had to pay or anything. This man grabbed his breakfast. And as those people were walking inside the room, he just followed them and went and sat down there. This man had no prior training, no prior, prior, no, nothing. It was not on his radar. But what I do believe was that this man was actually seeking God because, you know, one thing that was interesting with this man was he visited us at a time where we were still trying to find our church home, where we were still in that space trying to find a church. So we didn't really have a church. But this man, he was staying in a house as a guest, but on Sunday, he would actually take an Uber to church. And I know for many people, when you come from, you know, like if you're like in Nigeria or somewhere and you visit another country, like you depend on your hosts to, you know, go to church. This man didn't wait for anybody. He, he took an Uber and he went by himself and he did that. He was with us for a while. But anyway, this man, like I said, they said these people are here. They are building pools. So it's, you know, uh, people who build pools, pool manufacturers, like, you know, pool equipment manufacturers, stuff like that. That's what the conference is. And this man took a brochure for himself and he entered inside that hall and he sat there with them and stayed with them throughout the conference. He obviously made contacts, found information, things like that, and he left. That changed his life drastically. From that day, this man builds pools, like I said, for hotels. He builds pools for celebrities. He builds pools anywhere, not even just in Nigeria. And when I tell you that this man is wealthy, this has become one of the main businesses that he does now. And that's how this man got pushed into wealth. Like I said, I do not doubt that this man was asking God and had been seeking God and had been praying to God for God to open a door for him, for God to advance him, for God to bring him increase and all of that in his business. And so what he did was he simply took prophetic action. He believed that God had answered the prayer that he made and that he's, he's stumbling into a bunch of people going this way, going this way. And he's, what are you all doing there? And that's how he, he ended up in their midst. He took action from that day. And from that day, his life was never the same again. Friends, I will have you know that this simple thing that I just described is literally the key to getting into levels. Because there are things that you might be able to get by just asking, right? There are things that you may be able to get by, you know, following people. But there are things that you must push yourself. Like you must knock and you must be, you must enter that place by yourself. And you won't just do it by saying, hello, hello. You will have to knock your way through. That's what that man did. And there are many examples in the Bible of people who stepped into what they were supposed to be or where they were supposed to go by taking prophetic action. Friends, 
please hear me and hear me well. Action and prophetic action, they are not the same thing. So when I say prophetic action, I mean just that. And because we are a prophetic people, we, we cannot just, you know, leave that, that aspect of ourselves for, oh, okay, it's only when we are praying and we are praying in tongues. No, you must live that life and you must begin to take, uh, you know, prophetic action in that way. The story of the children of Israel, when they, um, when they, um, when they were able to uh, take Jericho, that, that was what happened. They were walking, they were walking round. They were walking round and it was based on the instruction that they were given. And so if they sat there saying, ah, we're believing God, we're trusting God. This is what many of us do as Christians. We say, oh, I'm trusting God, I'm trusting God. Your trust in God is complete and it is perfected. What is required now is action, action. Except God has told you, mm, I'm not letting you in here, except God has told you, oh, no, this is not the time for you. Because there were times when people would seek God and God would say, no, 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 do not go after those people because they will defeat you. I've not opened that place up for you yet. But except that was the case, when people would seek God and God would say, yes, I've granted you access there. The next thing they needed to take was action. I'm telling you that this is where many of us miss it because we spend so much time praying and it almost then becomes the easier thing to do. But there are little things that we could do in our lives that would truly shift us. There was something that I was trying to do recently. And, you know, you know, I hadn't paid attention so much to the way this thing was working, even in my life, until very recently. And I realized that this is not joke. And so when, you know, Big Mullah put me on the spot and made me actually probe my life as far as, like, this grace for access and how it has operated, I found that at any point in time, at every point in time, where something became open to me, it was that I pressed in and took necessary action. I told the story of how I managed to relocate to the US, the first and only person in my family to actually come here, how I managed to attend the school I attended, as expensive as it was, and I'm talking about 2012 expensive, not even 2023 expensive, right? The way all of these things have happened for me, my job, all of that, at every point in time, it was that I, if after God had given me that opening, after God had given me that grace, after God had made that door available, it was that I was willing to stand up and take action. Let me read something to you from 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 10. Um, this is Paul speaking. It says, by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace towards me was not in vain. Friends, many of us, the way that we are postured, we're making the grace of God that has been made available to us to be in vain. That's, that's what's going on. It's not that grace has not been made available, but our, our actions, our posture, our position is causing that grace to be in vain. Mm. That's a strong anointing today because I truly believe that many people will live here and understand that this is the missing link that they've you know, been struggling with this whole time. And it says, but I labored more abundantly than they all more abundantly than they all. So the grace of God does not show up to allow us laziness. It shows us, it shows up so that we can take actions that will be backed by the spirit of God. Because what has never been lacking is the backing of God. Where God has always felt clipped, where he has always felt limited is in the availability of men to take action. So Moses is crying before God and saying, oh God, how would these people think? And he said, why are, you talk, why are you crying to me? Speak and take them. Take this, you know, uh, this, these people through the sea. God has never, you know, his problem has never been if he can back things up. It's always been whether people are willing to take actions or not. So I want us to understand that this is literally the missing link. It's literally the missing key. We have to become a truly prophetic people, not just by somebody saying, oh, the word of the Lord, I receive a word. Many of us, it's like, oh, we just want to receive a word. No, you can stay with God till you receive a sure word in your spirit and act based on that word. And when you take action on that, things begin to open up in your life. Things begin to open up in your life. There was something that I was working on recently. I was actually um, trying to make some changes in my life, right? And I knew that they were expensive. Like, oh, I have to say this, right? Many of us, the reason why we still have not broken through 
or maybe the reason why we have not had the boldness to engage these doors many times is because of the backgrounds that we come from. We come from backgrounds of people who maybe have not done much or have not broken past certain thresholds. So it one, first of all, becomes a problem for us to think in our minds that we could possibly be better than the things that we've seen around us. Or two, we are like Joseph, where we are so willing and ready to share what we are thinking or what we are hoping for and what we're wanting with people who have not even moved past certain levels in their consciousness, in their understanding. So we have these big dreams, we have these big expectations, and then we share them with people who cannot see past themselves. They can't see past the box that their background has provided for them. And so they say things to us that cause us to shrink back from these doors. So instead of us to go and aspire for big doors, people would tell us things that would make us think, oh, who, are, who, who do I think I am? Who am I? That statement, who am I to? It's such a deep generational, uh, you know, uh, hold. It's such a stronghold. Who am I to? Who do I think I am to? This is something that you must break past. My husband and I were talking about something, uh, you know, because we, we, we tend to have these conversations on just about any topic at all. And, you know, that was when we, we came to that realization that many of us, this is truly where we get stuck. So we come to the church, we believe, we hear things, we pray, but we lack the ability to act. We lack the ability to do things because we are limited by our background. We can't see past it. So it's like, if I come from a family where this is the best that my father did or even maybe the uncles around us could do why do i think i would do more than that why do i think i would be more than that and sometimes it's not even just us having these feelings it's the people around us so you, you you want to attend certain kinds of school maybe you want to break into certain kinds of careers or maybe you want to have hit certain you know income goals or revenue goals if you're a business person but then you share it with someone who is still very limited in their mind, and then it sows that seed in your head, like, who am I? Let me just stand back. I want you to understand that you must be willing to let them go. When Paul says, the great door and an effectual has been opened unto me, but there be many adversaries, I want you to understand that not all of these adversaries are external. Some of these adversaries will be internal adversaries. There will be voices inside of you that tell you, Mm, no, this is not for you. Yes, it's, it's true that these things happen for people, but they're just not, you know, people like you, you know, based on where you come from, you know, just because of what you've done in the past or your history or your experience, whatever. Some of these adversaries that you're fighting, they're actually inside. So you must be constantly willing to push past whatever your mind tells you that your limit is in order to break through and get into certain levels. So when I talk about prophetic action, you must become comfortable with doing it. I heard somebody recently, I forget which message it was, and I even honestly forget the preacher who was saying it. And he was saying that there was a time that he was believing on God for something. Please hear me well when I say this. He was believing on God for something. And then he just, I don't know whether he heard or the Holy Spirit told him, I forget how it happened, but he suddenly got an instruction to begin to tithe on the amount that he was believing on God for. I think it was wanting a certain level of income or so. And so obviously he was tithing on what he had, what he was earning and still praying, Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe. And suddenly, I don't know where that insight came. I honestly can't remember the story, but the insight came to him, spiritual insight that he needed to start tithing on the amount he was believing for. And it sounded crazy. And if he was going to do that, it was going to eat up a huge chunk of his um, of his income. But he obeyed. He obeyed and he started to tithe on it. And once he did that, before long, that level opened up for him. Friends, that's not, oh, I'm believing God. That is not, I'm trusting God. No, that is that I trust God. I have prayed. I believe God has answered me. And now I'm taking prophetic action. That was prophetic action, friends. That was prophetic action. Choosing to begin a tithe on money that you haven't even earned. What you do when you do things like that is that you begin to put pressure on that door in the spirit. Because every level, every realm has a door that's that that's um, that's that's behind it. I don't even know how to, to explain it. Every level has a door that would I say seals it, that you know dis defines its boundaries. So when a person begins to tithe on income that they have not yet received, they are putting pressure on that door in the spirit 
that controls who gets in or out of that realm. So it's not about you standing outside the door and saying, I'm trusting God, I'm trusting God, I'm trusting God. Maybe somebody will come back here. No, it's that you begin to knock on that door. So this door of whatever amount of income, I will begin to knock on it with my tithe. It makes a noise in the spirit. They actually come to see what's going on. Remember what I was describing about if I was just bold enough to knock on that door, someone would have had to stand up from their desk to come check what's going on at the door. That's what happens in the spirit. So when you get bold enough, you get tired enough of your circumstances and your situations, and you begin to take prophetic action, it, it sounds an alarm, it rings a bell, it makes a noise in the spirit, and someone will attend to you. Someone will attend to you. I can tell you that someone will attend to you. There was something I was trying to achieve, right, in our home, and honestly, I did not believe that I could I could do it, right? Because quite honestly, the cost of it was daunting for me. And I remember the first time I ever saw somebody share like that specific thing. Sorry, I'm trying to, you know, just hold some details back. When I saw somebody first share that thing online, I was like, what? Who could afford that? Who could, like, my mind already told me like, it's not people like you that, you know, get to do this. That was what it was. But I knew in my heart that I wanted it. And so I was like, well, who knows? Maybe one day, maybe one day. You know, that was what I just kept telling myself. And then after a point in time, I actually just shoved it out of my mind because I was like, it's really not for people like you. And when I tell you that sometimes your backgrounds frame you for these things, I do know that part of it was because I don't, I don't come from the background where things like this just happen. So I struggled with believing that I could actually do it for myself and for my family. Lo and behold, one day I walk into a store. Now, I'm going to see how I can describe this without, you know, being too detailed, right? Again, like I said, this thing was going to be a very um, costly thing to achieve. Although important, although beneficial, it was going to be very costly to achieve. So I just had said I probably can never do it. But one day I walked into a store and I saw that particular thing. They had um, some of uh, the items, but it was literally like the entry level of it. So it was as cheap, like it was the cheapest, yeah, let me put it that way, the cheapest entry point to that thing that was available. So I'm gonna give an example, and this numbers are not even remotely real. So let's say you're trying to hit something or achieve something that, okay, you know, maybe $10,000 or whatever, right? So I had closed off from it. And then I walk into the store, cause I'm like, I could never do that. I could never, you know, get that. And one day I walk in this, into the store and I see that they had the entry piece for this thing. And maybe it was like, let's just say $1,000 was the entry point. I walked past it initially because I was like, mm. but something woke up in my spirit. And I went back there and I picked that item and I paid for it. And I took it and I just kept it in my house and I left it there. At that time, whether or not I was even thinking about it, what I had done was I had taken prophetic action to make a noise on that door. Let me tell you, this life, we don't see them, but it is full of doors. It is full of doors. It is full of doors. And so many of us, because we don't realize that that's how the world works, we walk around and, and remain in certain levels for longer than we need to be. So I, I got that little piece and I just kept it somewhere in my house. Believing that, you know, as it pleases God, one day it will happen for me. And I'm telling you that it was only a matter of months before truly God created an opening for me to be able to achieve that thing for my family. But it took me not just spinning in my head and telling myself, oh, I can't do it or oh, it's not for people like me. It took me taking prophetic action. Let me tell you, it can be as little as possible. It can be as small. It can seem as inconsequential as, you know, it, it, it might sound to you. But I tell you that until you actually take action, you have not registered intent in the spirit at all. All you have here is a desire. All you have here is just an internal monologue. All you have here is just your voice talking to yourself on the inside. But you must learn to make your noise in the spirit by knocking on those doors prophetically. You must. 
So let's say it's all oh, this, you know, kind of jobs and it's like, oh, I can never. Let me tell you, I, I realized that when it came to that, you know, grace for access speaking, it meant that I was always willing to put in the work. There was a time I was trying to change roles because I was trying to get to a higher level. And I had tried, I had tried, and it seemed like only people who fit a certain type of persona or category or appearance or whatever might be able to get it. But I knew that God had given me that he had opened me up to that there. He had given me the go ahead. And I decided I was going to strive for it. And so I started reaching out to people. I started talking to many people. There was one time that, in fact, one at one point during uh, the, the process, there was a man who said, you know what, I will allow you come interview, but the thing is, you know, I don't have budget. I, you know, I have no budget. I said, I will fly myself there. I will fly myself there. Typically, when you're going for these jobs, the company is supposed to pay for you to go. I said, don't worry about me, sir. I will fly myself there. I will pay for my accommodation and I will show up there. And that's what I did. I got there. Devil is a liar. I'm telling you the day of the interview, I woke up very sick. So sick that I was visibly shaking. I was visibly trembling in the interview room. And I said, Holy Spirit, you are the one who gave me this access. And I sat there and God just gave me wisdom. And I took a cup of tea and I held onto that cup of tea. That was how my temperature could even come down. I was sick, but I had to make my mark on that door. I finished the interview and I didn't get the job. But you know what? When I went there, I went there knowing that I may not get the job. So it wasn't me paying for that ticket knowing that, oh, I would get it. No, but I knew that I must make that mark. I must make that noise on the door. And I did that. And when I came home, I got the email. You did Good. Thank you. I, I was okay with that because I, I knew what I was doing. I was taking action. It wasn't long before, indeed, by the time I had registered my presence enough, the, the person who actually hired me came to meet me. It came, it was no more me chasing after it. I don't know if, you know, this has maybe made any part or made a mark with anybody or resonated with anybody, but I'm telling you that. The gap between where you are today and what you are believing God for is prophetic action that you have not taken. You have not sown seeds in that, in that layer. You must get to the level where you are willing to make noise on that level. So whatever that looks like, you must begin to register your presence. You must begin to, re didn't you read the verse? Didn't you read the, the, the verse in the Bible that says, lift up your head, all ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting words. Did you hear the question? Who is this? That's what was asked. Who is this? So those doors, they will, they will check. Like, that. please, I want you to know this and know this very well, that these doors are real. And you're like, who is this king of good? Who? Because they hear when people begin to put pressure on them. They, these, these doors, they, they, they know when somebody is beginning to make a noise there. So I want you to understand today that this is the missing piece between whatever you say you've been trusting God for and, you know, what it is that you're actually wanting to see actualized in your life. It is taking action. You must become bold enough. You must become courageous enough to take that action. Is it the certification you must take? Take the certification. Is it new kinds of people you must begin to start talking to? Start talking to them. Many times we, we, we take action based on where we are, as opposed to where we are supposed to be. I don't know if anybody here participates in the Hallelujah Challenge that um, uh, Pastor Nathan Obasi does, where you know, he will tell people to come looking like their testimony. This is what you are doing when you do that. You are actually knocking on those doors. You are making a noise. You are causing disruption so that somebody comes to pay attention to you and let you in. Why? Because you already have the access. You already have legal access. So I want you to leave here today understanding that. In January, I shared an instruction. And I want you to understand one thing again. When you press for access in this way, and you get in there. The grace of God that gets you in there is the grace that will actually keep you there. So it's not like we try to come and game God and then we get in and out. We're like, you know, let's just go off. No, I always like to mention that the grace of God will keep you there. I can tell you for a fact that I have multiple testimonies of God showing up 
in warfare dimension for me, when I'm in certain doors, as certain people decide to, you know, like rise up to prostrate me in there. You see in the book uh, of Joshua chapter five, where the children of Israel were supposed to march around Jericho to, you know, to get in. And then Joshua sees that angel and says, who are you? Are you for us or against us? And the angel says, I'm not for anybody. All I know is that access has been granted. My own job is to come and make sure that it's done. God has already provided power. He has already backed you up. The only thing left is for you to take action. So God had already released his angel ahead. Like, I don't know who is for anybody. I didn't come here for any you know, friendships or clicks or whatnot. I just know what I have been asked to do. It's that God has granted access and it's my job to ensure that, you know, it, it stays that way. So God already released his power in that direction. All it took for the children of Israel to get in was to actually follow that prophetic action of marching, of marching around it. So I don't know what that prophetic action is that you need to take today, but it is my prayer that the Holy Spirit will minister something to you. Is it a new level of income that you're believing on God for? You might want to try the example of that preacher who started to tithe on, I was here, preacher, yeah, I think it was, who started to tithe on the income level he was believing on God for. Or is it something that you're trusting God for? Begin to make your mark, begin to make your noise on that door, register your presence. And I guarantee you that it will not be long before somebody actually has to open that door for you because you actually have access in there. Before we close today, I want to share a prophet instruction that I shared with the women on King's Hour when we did our 21 days of prayer. I don't know if they've uh, followed the instruction. I don't know if they've kept it in mind, but it was one that I received and I wanted to share with everybody because it will make a difference in your year. In Genesis chapter 13 and 17, this I'm closing out now. This was the instruction that God gave to Abraham. He says here, it says, arise, walk through the land in the length of it and in the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee. From the beginning, even until now, God's mode of operation has always been that he will grant access, then you will take action. This was prophetic instruction that he was given to Abraham. Walk the length and breadth of it. Walk the length and breadth of it. What you do when you do that is you're registering your presence. You are making a noise. You are making a mark there. And it will not be long before you enter. So I don't know what it is you are believing in God for. If there is something that pertains to that thing, maybe you are hoping to have a shop or a store in a certain building, a certain complex. Maybe you're hoping to be an employee of a particular uh, company. Maybe you're hoping to get your product into in a particular store or something. The instruction as we depart today is to begin to walk the length and breadth of it, people of God. Go out there boldly and begin to take prophetic action and let God do the rest of it. God who backed his word and ensures that his name you know, is not solid, it's not muddied, will be the person to bring you into that thing. What he's waiting on is for you to exercise the power that is within you, that is the power to knock. So as we depart here today, I want us to say a quick prayer because I know that there are many people, there was somebody who was believing on God for something. She was believing on God for her own place. And I said, you know what? And I received this as an instruction. I said, Get, go buy something. These are the things that we must do as believers. I said, go buy something that indicates that this is something that you're taking into your new place. And she, I don't think she did it. She didn't do it. But because I was that concerned in the matter, I actually took that action on her behalf. So I went and I actually bought the thing and I noted it there. It was a matter of months. And that, 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 uh, you know, uh, request actually got fulfilled. She eventually got her own place. So when I tell you today that prophetic action is the missing link between the things that you are believing God for and the actualization in terms of the grace for access, this is what you must walk away with. You must take prophetic action. Let's run up. And I just want us to pray for two minutes. I just want us to pray for two minutes and ask God for the grace. Ask God for the grace to not let, you know, that grace that is upon us to be in vain. Ask God. Ask God today. Paul said it, he said, and the grace that was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but yet I labored more than they all. 
it will task you. Said the example of me traveling where in the cold, very sick, shaking, but I knew that I had to knock that door. And once I did, it wasn't long before somebody actually came and opened it for me. So we pray to God to live for grace, to labor, for grace to knock. We have stood in front of these doors for too long. We have walked around these mountains for too long. But today, God is releasing grace to somebody to actually begin a walk in the reality of this graceful access that has already been made available. Whereby you desire things and you take a step and God breaks it open for you. Let's just open our mouths and let's pray for one minute. And when I finish, I will have... um. I'm going to just say a prayer just to close us out. Let's just open our mouths for one minute and pray together. Father, we ask for the grace of boldness, for the boldness to take effective steps. We ask for the grace in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Wow. What a message. Thank you, Amy, for sharing your truth. What a message. This message has ministered so powerfully to me. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Can hear you. Okay. Yes, we can hear you. Great. We can hear you. Yeah, yeah. This has been a powerful message. And let me tell you the truth prophetic action is truly the missing link. We don't have time to go over some of these things, but let me just say a quick prayer for us. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this message. We thank you for the vessel that you have used to release divine truth into our life. Let these words take roots downwards. Let it produce fruits upwards. Father, we are trusting in you for the boldness, the spirit of boldness to take prophetic action on what we ought to do for our next level. Access is indeed a blessing. We don't take it for granted that we are called sons of the Most High God. Father, we ask that the access we have with you translates in the world of men as well as we begin to take prophetic action. Let that action, let that access, Father, open doors for us, the grace for access that I believe that you've put on all of us that came to this meeting today. Father, we ask that you fill your vessel back with virtue, every virtue that she's poured forth. Let's have it refilled, a refilling anointing a replenishing anointing, oh God, and let the truth that we've learned today bring back the words. We will not be like that man that looks in the mirror and forgets what he or she looks like, but we will take divine action, prophetic action, and ensure that we follow through on that which the world of man needs and that which divine direction has come to give us that you give us through dreams, through visions. Thank you for that woman that would buy her wedding gown in faith because of what she has heard today. Thank you for that person that will go rent their office building because of what they've heard today. Thank you, Father, for that person that will take the first step towards owning their own home 
because of what they've heard today, prophetic action is indeed the missing link. And Lord, we ask that as we begin to take steps towards our future, that your blessing rest upon our lives. Thank you, Father, for answered prayers. Thank you, Lord, for wisdom, for knowledge, for understanding. Thank you, Father, for everyone present at the altar today. Thank you for those that you are making into prophetesses and prophets, those that you are empowering with the gift of life to be distributors of the divine life of God. My goodness, I see in the spirit and God is ordaining people that would have access indeed in the prophetic. You would speak and you will be heard in the world of men and in the world of spirits, in the kingdom of, of God. Your voice will carry weight indeed. Thank you. Thank you because you will speak life, words that are spirits and words that are life to many people whose lives will be changed because we attended today's service. When all is said and done, Father, let Jesus alone be glorified. Thank you, Lord, for answered prayers. For in Jesus' precious and mighty name we pray. Amen. There's somebody on this altar, the Spirit of God says you've been praying amiss. You've been praying amiss. Ask that my will be done in your life. You've been praying amiss and ask that my will be done and you will see access granted. Thank you all and God bless you. Over to you, Amy. Man, thank you. Thank you so much, Dama. You know, calling out that example. Please, as we leave here today, this is something I want to tell you all. As you begin to take that prophetic action, things will begin to move, will begin to align. Is it a car you're believing on God for? Maybe the car is too much. Maybe what you want to buy is your seat cover. If it's a wedding, you know, you're trusting God for maybe your shoes. If it's a child, maybe you want to buy, you know, clothes for them. Whatever it is, just take action in line. If you have prayed, if you have believed, then take action. If you have said God, then take action that denotes that trust. And I trust that even as you begin to do that today in faith, it will put pressure in the spirit realm to bring you into that level that you're pressing into. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Thank you, everyone. God bless you all for your time. And we will see you again next week. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And bye-bye. Thank, Thank you so much. much. God bless you.